Welcome back to Edinley for our latest episode of Box 2 in partnership with Best Western Hotels GB, supporting local, proudly independent hotels. Welcome back to Box 2, myself, Jamie Jones Buchanan, joined this week in studio by Leeds Rhinos and England International Centre stroke back rower Amy Hardcastle, who's just come off the back of a 52 nil win against the Huddersfield Giants in the Challenge Cup. Are you happy with that result? Of course, yeah. Considering how hot it was out there, it were it were tough, but we had a, a good bench, so it meant we could get a bit more rest than than normal. So yeah, it's good to always come away with a win, and you know we still we still won by a good score. And Huddersfield playing a little bit better as well. You can see the game rising there. Yeah, yeah, of course. And we found that defensively they were really good. Like they've, they've done the homework and they got stuck in, and even a bit of their attack was a lot better as well. And they um, exploited some of our areas and, you know, we've, we've got good line defence, so we didn't let them in. But it, it was good, all good. Not the best result for the men at the weekend, but I was really encouraged by the performance, actually. But before we get there, it's a knockout competition, a men's game, but it's a bit different, isn't it, the Challenge Cup with the women? It's like a pool system. Just give us a bit of a brief insight into how it works. Yeah, so, you know, we, we all got put into different group stages and... You know, obviously the top teams went in as the heads of them and, you know, it is difficult because, you know, you're coming in at a, a stage that you wouldn't find that the Men's Super League was. So it's, it is hard to, you know, start the beginning of the season playing York and it being such an intense game to sometimes because you're playing teams that are maybe two divisions below, it's quite hard with the intensity and, and yeah. the skill level. So, you know, we, we, we've got through them and, and like I say, it's... It's hard because you've got to keep switched on with it because it's so easy when you find that you're putting score, you know, points on all the time is you yep. come away from what you're supposed to do because you're finding maybe them gaps or you, you're going on an edge more, you, you're not backing like you should. So you just come away from stuff that you talk about in, in, in training really. But, you know, we've, we've got through the stages. There's been some quality players across, you know, even from the divisions and, it, and it's good to see what talent will be, you know, coming through as well. Um, but like I say, it's always good to just get get them teams done. Lots of good stuff going on. I'm, I'm amazed, blown away every week at what's bubbling up under the surface at the Leeds Rhinos. Now, obviously, the men's team comes under the biggest scrutiny. Got knocked out of the Challenge Cup at the weekend against a very good Wigan Warriors side. But I was really encouraged by the performance. I thought certainly the start, and there's a lot of talk about these 40-minute periods with the, the men's team at the minute. But what did you make of the performance? And do you take a lot of encouragement about what could potentially happen for the rest of the season. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's every game's different and people will probably look at the scoreline, you know, that they played the the week before and, you know, the conditions on you know on the field that day were just in, it, it were hard and, you know, unless you're a player on that field and in that moment of time it's you know, you're the only one that can kind of judge on how things go. It's so easy sometimes being a spectator and I found myself the same, but you know, it's it's just unfortunate and that's rugby league, isn't it? Yeah. And, and we get to go again and the lads should be proud of what they've done and they'll keep doing what they're doing. You know, they'll they'll go through the stages where they go up and down, but, you know, they come together and that's what they've shown, like they've how they started off, where they went and then, like, they're coming back again and, you know, you've just got to give them credit. Like, they give all the time up, they get out on that field, they want to do everyone proud, they want to do the shirt proud. Like, sometimes you just got to give a little bit of slack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, again, those 40-minute periods, so when you look at what's going on actually and contextualise it, the league game over at the DW Stadium there, that was posted a lot of points in that second half, everybody's blown away. And then when you put that together with the first half of the Challenge Cup game, you've run up pretty much 50 points against Wigan Warriors, which is massive and it shows the potential bubbling up under the surface there. When we can harness that and contextualise it into one 80-minute period, when it really matters, you know, the potential is massive for this group. And I, I'm looking at it with a, a great deal of interest. I want to talk about Harry Newman. He's a world-class centre in my eyes. You've played the majority of your career in the centre. Is he a player that you like to look at, admire and see some real world-class potential in? Yeah, he's a world-class centre. You can see that. And um, what, you know, when that individual stuff that he does as well, when he gets the ball and that just showed, you know, the week before and yeah. them two interceptions and... Just a class player and, you know, it, it just takes that building as well and, you know, there might be new, you know, connections around that and, you know, you just got to get used to your plays. But, yeah, he's, 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 so, he's got so much more potential in him and, like I say, he's, he's definitely on the horizon of going even further and bigger, yeah. 
Yeah, there was a few moments the spotlight was shone on him and I'll, I'll, I'll direct that spotlight and put it to bed right here and now. Three tries he scored and I thought some of the moments that he had is exactly the reason why we've been in the game in the contest and when you look forward to potentially winning, I don't know, a grand final, dare I, dare I suggest it and uh, maybe a World Cup final one day with England, it wouldn't surprise me if Aaron Newman was right at the centre of it. Plays the same way that he trains at 120 miles an hour and world class. A couple of other good performances in there, Cam Smith just grows every week. I'm always astonished having watched him from being sort of this big, coming through uh, ranks in little cast junior teams there. And Reese Martin as well, got his kicking head on, playing really well, looks big and strong. Somebody else who's a bit of a back rower stroke centre like yourself, He's played well, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, really good. And, you know, he's consistent and he keeps going and he never shies away from the hard work and you can see that. And, you know, on the back of what you just said about Cameron, it's, you know, seeing him get that 13 shirt, he's just, he's a different player now. Just how much he's progressed as an athlete is unbelievable. And that, that pass that he has, like, I always used to just see him and just tear it up, but now he's just added so much value to his game and he's more dangerous. So yeah. it's been really good to see some of these ones that have, like, was starting off of like being the role models now, and yes. you know the the ones that are kind of at top of the team and and everyone that you look up to. Love it, enjoy it. That's what Kevin Sinfield always used to make us do. It was a big demand. Well, the wheelchair rugby team would have enjoyed their uh, win over uh, LFC, seventy eight points to twenty eight. I think one of the the most gratifying parts of last week was though was the. Wheelchair Rugby League development side, the new players played their first game against Hull SC development team as well, winning 22 points to six. So that's outstanding. Uh, there was an LDSL festival as well, the PDRL and Learning Disability Rugby League back in action. Uh, so lots going on at the Leeds Rhinos. Amy, just give us a bit of an insight into your early career, how you started playing Rugby League and how did you end up at Bradford, which was your first club? Mm, so... I was at college at Calderdale and played football. There weren't no teams when I was younger. Um, so it was just more union. And then there was this poster on the wall saying Siddle was starting a women's team. So wow. I was like, I was 17 going 18. I was like, oh, I need to do this because I'm too aggressive for football. <laughs> uh, so honestly, people would think, oh, your confidence, stuff like that. It took me a lot of persuading by my mom and I was so nervous about going and joining this team because there was already a few girls that had been training and I just thought right I'm gonna have to do it I'm gonna have to get past these things I if I don't go do it I'm never gonna do it so I went and did it and from there I never looked back and you know did pretty well at Siddle um you know six months I got picked up by Brenda Dobeck Right. to join the um, England performance squad Brilliant. So, and I played full back then <laughs> <laughs> so it was all right I enjoyed that and like and obviously a year in and stuff I got a couple of um, international caps but fell pregnant oh, um, right, so yeah. it was kind of do, you know what do we do so you know obviously I kept my daughter and she's 12 now so um, probably the best thing that helped me grow as a person as well um, and then Came back, the team folded, we ended up losing everyone and wow. a couple got pregnant. So Bradford started from Bradford Thunderbirds, I went to with Kirsty Marona. She dragged me there. Okay. Yeah, so I went to uh, Bradford Thunderbirds, played alongside Lois there and yeah, it, it was good. Um, got back into England set up and then we ended up 2017, went to Bradford Bulls. Played in three World Cups as well, 2013, 17 and 2022 stroke 21, depending on what you, what you make of the name there. But have you seen a progression throughout each World Cup and the women's game get bigger and stronger? Oh yeah, I, 2013 we played at Dewsbury, we played at Butler, that pitch oh, against <laughs> France and it was like the heat that we're, we're having at the moment, if not worse. Um, and we had about, I think it was about 500 against the Kiwis where I got an me at trick against him which has never been done before so a bit of history there for you um, <laughs> and f looking at that now to having about 500 and odd people there like that felt huge for our game because years ago you just had your parents there it wasn't yeah. that big 2017 we're obviously in Australia so we're nice to have a few of our families coming out there um, but you know it was it was more for overseas players that and it was good but obviously the, the travel gets you but 2021 slash two incredible just the profile just out there and media you know people buying into buying into the women's game and, and wanting to 
publicise it a lot more, obviously the BBC broadcasting it, so that meant anybody could watch it because it was free. Like the BBC wanted to do the Woman of Steel documentary, which were great. Like we've been doing that a few years just because of how many changes and obviously with, a, with it getting postponed. But that's what we've needed to do and we've got to keep doing that to get the exposure and, and, and get more girls and even parents seeing it. Because what I found in the past is we've lost a lot of the, the girls to other sports because after, you know, under 11s, you can't play with lads no more. No, no. So because they want under 12s, that was it. They had to. They couldn't play rugby no more because they want no teams. Whereas now, you've now got an under. You've got an under twelve, so that they can fall straight into a lot of clubs and start buying into this. But that comes off to the the World Cup and getting it out there and more girls seeing it. You've found the amount of parents that I meet and children that I see at games and even you know walking down the street is. You know, thank you so much. She watched you on the telly. She wants to be a rugby player now, and Brilliant. like that for me is just game changing. Like you can win these trebles, you can win all these awards, but for me to be an inspiration to other other children and even adults as well, just you know, to try something, to get in a team sport, like that means that just means the world to me because you just feel like you're making a positive change on people and a difference and giving them belief and hope that one day, you know, I could aspire to be like Amy Arcastle and, you know, that's something that I want to do. And I think if you can give someone that little bit of hope, it's just, it's just great. But I couldn't do that yeah. without having the backing of, you know, media coming on here myself and doing this with you to be able to give my time up and, and, and talk about, you know, the game and the way it's going. And we've just got to keep doing that and, and sure. building. Totally agree. I watched the little VT there that got put out at the Mid-Season International about Leah Burke being a gymnast yeah. uh, before, you'll know really well, uh, coming into the Rugby League. And I went over to PNG 2019 with the women's team and just become engrossed with the de development of the game. Loved it, absolutely committed and uh, as hard working as anything I've seen. You didn't go to that one, you just come back, aren't you, from Australia? You don't like flying, so no. you, you didn't want to get back on plane. No, that were bad. I, my anxiety took over me. Um, <laughs> and people people think I went out there and then when I actually talk about it, it's, they don't realise it, but just... And that's how I can talk about, you know, my mental health struggles. And But, like, when anxiety takes an older, it's so difficult and it's it's hard because I can't watch it back. Right. Just because, like, that, I missed out. Um, right. Interesting. But, yeah, like I said, I'd never miss a, an England tour again and I... I got a, I got on a plane with the lads when we went over to France. So you know I'm I'm, I'm making steps, but it's 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 not easy. But I won't I won't miss an England tour again. Put it that way. Remember Shauna Shauna Hoy. Shauna. Yeah, it's Shauna. Um, bit of turbulence on way back, and she got out of her seat and went, "I'm getting out. I'm getting off. <laughs> Thirty thousand feet up here. I don't know where you're gonna go." You mentioned mental health there. Really important. You do a lot of work with Movember charity as well. Um, in the community with young people in particular. Just give us a quick insight into what that looks like. Yeah, so Work for Rugby cares and we're Movember's delivery partners. So we get to deliver a mental fitness workshop yep. in community clubs, but also we've been doing a lot of schools now, aiming at the year nines. And it's for me, it's great because I suffered myself, you know, maybe not at a younger age, but further on in life and you do find there's a lot more anxiety there's a lot more body image especially with girls and and obviously there's a lot of stuff that you know lads go through but they don't speak about it yeah. um but i feel like you know being able to use obviously my professional background and, and speak and go into clubs and especially when you're going into community clubs they listen to you because they know who you are i feel like they do anyway that they listen to you and i think when you can be authentic and, and real about it and and, and talk about looking after yourself because especially in the game there'll be things that go wrong but y you might hold on to that and I wish I knew that a long time ago because yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it had made a massive difference within myself um, so I just feel, I, I'm just grateful that I can go into schools and and support and give education around it looking out for your mates looking out for these signs of if your mate's struggling whereas normally you probably just not even recognise it where I think it's really important now because we know how how common it is, how many people are struggling, and we've just got to we've got to have each other's backs because it is we are living in a difficult time, I would say, and especially the younger ones with all the social media, it, you know, ex exposure and it is good in ways social media, and I, and I totally get that because I use it a lot for for my background and my profile in a positive way, 
but sometimes you're exposed so much as a child of yeah. having to be a certain way, maybe <laughs> that online bullying and stuff like that. And you do find since COVID that kids are struggling so much more because they've been so driven to this nowadays. So it's it's nice that I can go out there and deliver it and looking after your mental fitness. You know, in terms of the work, the community work that we've been doing, the Rhinos Challenge happened the previous, these last two weekends. Have you been down to Rhinos Challenge? Have you heard about it yet? Well, my daughter was supposed to be going, but it's just, it's been a bit difficult because of obviously playing as well. So yeah. we just couldn't manage it this year, um, unfortunately, but I've heard it's, it's pretty good and pretty carnage as well. Carnage, <laughs> carnage down at Butler in Skeggy. It's all Skeggy. Some stats here. Listen to this, right? Over two weekends, just under 12,000 people would have attended wow. getting around Rugby League and netball. 280 teams, 103 netball teams, 50 match officials, which is really important as well, training the uh, match officials, giving them an opportunity to get involved. Over 1,250 rugby and netball matches played. Uh, 4,000 players from under 17s to under 15s on 27 pitches, 13 netball courts, and 4,000 players again there coming away having that great experience. That's pretty phenomenal, isn't it? Unbelievable. It's great for kids, isn't it? And families, yeah. and you can make a bit of a time away as well and all be together. And I just think when you look at stuff like that, that's what it's about, isn't it? As well, it's just like, it's just that early development, being able to be a part of something like that and be around them crowds and that achievement. And it's just fantastic. I think it's great what they do with it, to be honest. It's brilliant. Part of belonging and a purpose, all big within that mental health circle. This week is a massive week, probably behind the scenes, the biggest week of the season for me. So many people come up with, and I think we've got about 400 people corporate in Howard. I can't wait to be up there because it's going to go off. Loads going on in and around the ground in the South Stand as well. Double header, eh, mate, back. Is this the first time you've played back again, St. Ellen, since joining Leeds? How much are you looking forward to it? Can't wait. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's hard because obviously you, you still got quite a good you know, a few mates there, cl close friends, to be honest. But we love that battle with each other on field. It's like when you go England training, we love, like, getting that battle again. Because, you know, it's, it's just that, it's, it's harmless, it's harmless fun. But, yeah, really looking forward to playing St. Helens. You know, it takes me back to Bradford when we used to play. I used to really enjoy playing Saints because of, you know, the structure that they do, they shit the ball a bit about, and it kind of gets you under the pump. And, and that's exciting because that's the games that you want to play. You yeah. want them tough games, you want to be in a battle, you want to come off that field where you feel like you've got nothing left in you because that's why you sacrifice everything you do, that's why you train so hard because of them games and it's mint that it's going to be at Edinley and a double header, can't wait for it. How important is it for that sort of development, that atmosphere to be able to play in front of a, an increasing crowd getting ready for the men's game as well? It's what you play, it's what you play for, isn't it? And yeah. you know, here in the South Stand, but just when you start seeing people filling it up, it, for me, it just gives me that buzz and, you know, you do play for yourself and you do play for the badge, but when you start hearing fans behind you and people shouting your name, it just, when you're struggling a bit, it just kind of keeps you going. It's that, it's that little switch that sometimes I definitely need as a player is, and just having that backing and support and that's something that Leeds do very well is they've, they get behind, they get behind the, the teams here and I'm really looking forward to Friday in the sun. Maybe not the sun, but yeah. Looking forward to getting back here and, and um, having the crowd behind us and getting out on that amazing pitch. Awesome. And just quickly, back row, getting closer to the middle now. How much are you enjoying that? Oh, if I told you how we're enjoying that, I'd be lying. <laughs> 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 no, do you know what? It's, it's been tough. And do you know when you talk about coming out of your comfort zone, like I felt vulnerable, like yeah. massively vulnerable, because all I've ever known is kind of being out on that edge and having that space and time and ball, which... That's all I want, you know, is yeah, having that yeah. time. But then when I've actually pulled myself away, because there's been times where I've, you know, I've been at home crying, I'm getting too old, you know, I'm, I'm asking myself, is, I can't do this anymore, you know, because I'm yeah. changing, but it's because I know I'm vulnerable. But now that I've got past it, I know that it's strengthening me as a player once I've got past that battle with it. And when I think about the energy battle in the middle, I never take, I've never taken it away from forwards because I know how hard it is. And to come in and actually be like, wow, it is harder than even imagined. Yeah. So, you know, it's adding so much value. So if I go back to international or I need to go back into that centre role here, it's just added value to my game because it's just building up that engine. 
yep. a bit more of a pass, getting getting my lines, getting that lines run. So, you know, I'm I'm starting to enjoy the position. Good. Um, but yeah, I, it, you know, it's people say that as you get older, you start going to middle. No, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> aiming for that. <laughs> but no, I, I'm enjoying it. And like I say, it's it's going to bring me on even more as a player. And you know. Keep me, keep me head in the game because I need to be in the contact. I need to start doing that a little bit more because sometimes you you get you don't get as much on an edge. So I love that that initial contact because I'm not quite used to it. So I love that. It's a good battle. Good on you. I enjoyed watching you week one with Caitlin Beavers out there. I thought it was a real dynamic left edge there. Just a bit of an insight when I was about that age as well. I remember 2014, told my bicep at St Helens on Mossy Masoi. And uh, it was in as good as it gets. The the documentary about Leeds there. Yeah, I just brought down one training session because I thought the same. Am I getting too old? I, I seem to be injured all the time, and I'm really struggling. But I got round it. Brian McDermott was outstanding. Put his arm round me, told me to wind my neck and give me a bit of a clip round here, and we played another four or five years. So keep going. Just got to keep reinventing ourselves. Right. Quick last question. The men. Off the back of that performance against Wigan, I think the tide is rising. I think we're starting to understand where we're really good. We've had a win already against St. Helens. How do you think they're going to go against the Saints? I think it'll be a close game. I think, you know, this week they're going to train hard. They'll obviously train hard like they always do, but they'll probably fix a few things up. Yeah. And they're going to come out raring for Saints because they're going to want to prove a point. So I, I think, for me, I think it'll be a, a two win for us at Leeds on Friday. Yes, double header, double win, loads going on. Starting in the South Stand, there'll be balloon modellers and face painters on the concourse from 5 pm, uh, along with two 40 minute sets from Headingley Favourites, Loud Noises, Brass Band at 6 pm and 7 pm. Match day host Rich Williams will also run through the big match preview and latest team news at 6.40pm. Elton Wrong will also be whizzing round on his piano, entertaining the crowds out there. Pre-match on the pitch, we've got some schools and some parades taking place. We'll also be welcoming back upper man John Innes to the field with pyro techniques. Uh, at half-time, we'll see the pitch packed with our junior teams and we'll also have athletes from the Leeds Gymnastic Club performing on the field. Finally, get there early and save 50% on all draft pints up until 6pm. Our self-service e-bars will be located in front of the Headingley Lodge near the Western Terrace. And remember, the South Stand Bar will remain open post-match with a player interview on the podium straight after the Hooter, whilst gold members can make their way up to the Long Bar for post-match interviews and the chance to meet the team with me. And last, but certainly not least, this guy will be at the stadium promoting his book, doing a few book signings. Sir Kevin Sinfield, he's going to be a sir one day. You can see I've already got a sneaky preview and uh, the book smashed a bit already. I've been reading and he's called me Jamie Jones all the way through it, which is quite bizarre. So every writer calls me JJB or Jones Buchanan. Uh, I've only got a few pages left, but is that a book that you'd like to get stuck into one, uh, one afternoon? Well, yeah, like I say, I'm trying to get better with my reading because I'm not that good at it. So if uh, there's an audio, definitely. There is an audio yes. book coming out the last week of May, so look out for that on Audible as well. Kev Sinfield's actually got the record for the quickest uh, narration of a book on Audible. They asked him to book out three days and he did it in one afternoon. That's Kevin Sinfield for you. You won't expect anything less, would you? Right then, we've uh, run over. I've really enjoyed my time. Big thanks to Amy Ardcastle for joining us this week. Also, a big thanks to Best Western Hotels for their partnership and sponsorship as well. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. See you next time. God bless.